Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris, your automotive advisor here at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. This video is for those that just purchased their awesome 2021 Honda Accord Touring. Congratulations, guys. I'm going to show you guys how to customize your vehicle settings so when you arrive at the dealership and you drive off, you're set for success. Everything's set the way you guys exactly want it, all right? I can't wait to hear about how you guys put this vehicle to the test as well. Drop it down in the comments, share with the community for those that are considering to buy one of these. Now, let's go customize your awesome vehicle settings now. All right, so here we are right in the Honda Accord Touring. Um, we're at the home screen at the moment. Check, settings, let's select that. There we go. We're gonna select vehicle. If you can't select this because your vehicle is not in park, pull over, get in park, and then it allows you to customize your vehicle settings from there. First thing's gonna pop up is gonna be a tire pressure monitoring system calibration. So if you get a low tire pressure light that comes over here, you can simply reset that uh, by coming right here and there we go reset that thing okay after you adjust it now you have your driver's assist system set up this is for all of your honda sensing features or safety features stuff like that or anything that involves with assisting with driving you got your blind spot information system right here as you know you got your blind spot indicators on the side mirrors now you can change if you want the audible or just the visual stuff like that i like having both right now so when i'm driving the appropriate speed someone's in my blind spot it lights up the only time it talks back is when someone's in my blind spot and driving the appropriate speed and I have my turning indicator on it, therefore it's gonna beep at me. You get your heads up warning. So you can simply turn that on or off the warning light for your heads up flash. And that's all gonna be right over here. I'm gonna try to move this tripod so you guys can see it. I don't know if you can. And that's what your heads up display is right there, all right? And you can choose what you want to uh, have as a visual up there. You guys can check out my videos. I'll talk more in depth about that. All right, now let's get back to here to the vehicle settings. I'm gonna keep that on. You're gonna have your traffic sign recognition system. So simply if you want that small indicator over here on the driver's interface, that's gonna be next to the speed limit that you have here on the driver's interface, or do you want that off? I'm gonna keep it on. I like to have that little, little reminder saying, hey, this is the speed limit, Chris. You have your forward collision warning distance. You can select the distance between those three stages when it's gonna to start to warn you that you can hit an object. I don't know the exact distance, but hey, your owner's manual may know. A Honda has it set to normal, so I'm gonna keep it on normal. Hit the back button. You get your ACCs, your adaptive cruise control, forward vehicle detection beep. I'm gonna turn this on just because we're going to go on a test drive. I want everyone to know all the beeps, all the features that the Honda Accord has to offer. As we're going through this, guys, there's no right or wrong answer. It just comes down to your personal preference. So simply, as we have your adaptive cruise control on, it senses a car, it's gonna beep at you to let you know, hey, I found a car in range, I'm slowing you down. All right, let's save that. Scroll down, you got your lane keeping assist. So when you go out of your road, right, out of your lane, it's gonna beep at you. I'm gonna keep that on. You got your road departure. You can change the sensitivity of your road departure or just have it to as warning only so it won't bring you back. If you hate it, as it brings you back, if you just wanna be as more of a lane departure than anything, change it to the warning only. Driver's attention right here this pretty much somehow the car is going to have a way to indicate when you're doing a really bad driving habit saying hey chris you need to pull over and take a break you know what i mean because you're starting to be a liability here now uh, i want the car to do everything in its power to alert me so i'm going to keep it on the default option now that's everything underneath driver's assist system setup we'll come right down here to meter setup you can select your know, language is the first option you got three different options right there what I love about the cord to give you a good summary pretty much for the most part is you select all this stuff to let you know what we're kind of playing around with so you don't have to memorize it. Now you can fine tune your temperature gauge if you want to within five degrees swings. As you move this tripod right here, you can see that you're it's right there at 92 degrees already. It's only 10 o'clock. All right, so there we go. I'll let you guys uh, decide if you want to fine tune that, okay? All right, we got your rear seat reminder. Simply turn that on or off, all right? So let's say, you know, you start up the car, back door opens up, or since there's an object back there or something like that on the seat, it's gonna remind you right here on the driver's interface to get back in check, all right? 
I sound a little weird today, guys, it's just because I'm just got over a cold. All right, so I'm kind of still recovering here from that. Now we have your adjusted alarm volume. So this is gonna be like your, uh, well, it says it right there, turning indicators, door warnings, stuff like that. Changes how loud that stuff's going to be. Get those three options. I'm gonna keep it on default or medium right here. I'm sure my wife's gonna say, hey, turn that on high, you're gonna need that, Chris. We'll come right down here to reverse alert tone. So simply when you put the vehicle into reverse, it gives a little alert tone to let you know, hey, I'm in reverse. We'll come right down here. You got your panels right here. So on your driver's interface, you can customize some of the driver's interface items right over there. And you can choose what you want to mess around with, what do you want, and if you want to reorder it, okay? So just throwing that all of that right out there for you guys. And let's move this right over so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So this is the items we're talking about right here. I just when you're in there selecting things, you can't show that. All right, so let's get right back over here. So simply everything is right now is visible. I can uncheck it. Boom, boom. I don't want that on there. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to reorganize it. You know, click and drag the shows and put something first before something else. All right. So there we go. That's the option right there. You got your fuel efficiency backlight. I'm going to keep that on. As I move this tripod once again here, you got this nice white light right there. That's your fuel efficiency backlight. It goes from white to green when you are being fuel efficient, and then green to white when you're not. It's just a visual coach to improve your fuel efficiency gain. Leveling up. There we go. You got your trip A and trip B. Same thing. You can choose when it resets automatically or keep it as the default and you can automatically reset that as you see fit. You get your tachometer. Right now it's off. I'm going to come over here because it's going to be a visual. You can see what the tachometer is going to be. I'm going to turn that on. Save. And then there it is. It will always display right there on the left hand side for you. No matter what you're in. I like it, more of a visual thing. All right, got your speed and distance. Then you got your turn by turn auto display. As you can see it right up there, it's gonna tell you for your heads up. I'm gonna keep that on. All right, so now that's everything underneath the meter set up. You got your driver's position set up. You can simply save the position are those key fobs, I mean. You can have everything save up to your key fob link. And then you get your seat. I'm gonna keep all of this stuff on here for you guys. Most people do. Keyless access setup. You get your door unlock mode. So you walk up to the car with the key fob in your purse, jacket, pocket, wherever the case is, you put your hand in the handle, which of these options are gonna unlock for you, all right? Maybe it's just me, so I'm gonna do driver's side door only. Maybe I got the kids with me all the time, and you know, it was it's a yank on handle, so you know, maybe I do all doors. You got a smart light flash right here. As you can read that right there, simply when you hit lock or unlock, you know, or touch the handle or stuff like that, you want the lights to flash for the smart entries to let you know they locked or unlocked. So I'm gonna say yes, I like to have the little visual. Same thing right here, just with the beep, the audible noise, just because there's going to be a delay when you uh, put your thumb down on the ridges to lock the door or when you put your hand in the handle to unlock it, um, there's a delay. So I like a little audible noise, so I'm not there out there just yanking on the handle as I'm rambling on here. You get your remote start system. I can't think of a reason that God's green earth, you want to deactivate that, so you can't use that at all from the key fob, but if you want to, you can. If you guys know a reason why, put it down in the comments, let me know. Maybe it's just something I haven't thought of yet. All right, so now that's everything underneath keyless access setup. We're going to come down here to the next option as your lighting setup. We're going to start from the top, work our way down. You got your headlights auto timer. So simply drop the car, you shut the door in X amount of time. Guess what? Your headlights are going to turn off. Which of these options work best for you? Interior light dimming time. Shut the car, shut the door, X amount of time of these three options, lights will turn off for you. 
Auto light sensitivity. There we go. As you can see here, it says right here automatically when your headlights are on the auto. So pretty much the sensitivity on those when they will come on or off. I'm going to keep it on the default. We have the interior light. So as you know, when your headlights come on, pretty much your interior lights kind of dim for the most part. Um, you can change actually the brightness, you know, on these uh, interior lights. The ones would be like on the driver's interface, stuff like that. You can max it out so it'd be the max brightness. You got auto headlights on with wipers. So let's say my headlights are on auto and my wipers come on. And my, you know, because my auto sensing range your wipers come on because I have an auto and headlights will automatically come on. So it's raining during the daytime. Headlights uh, come on. There we go. All right, we'll come down to door and window setup. From here, we're going to start from the top, auto door lock. We just got in the car when I drive off from the dealership here, guys. Congrats, by the way. And when do you want your doors to lock? With speed, shift from park, have it off. With speed's fine with me. We have key and remote. So let's say you got the key fob with you. Uh, I think it's in my pocket right now. I take it out and hit the unlock button. And I hit it once. Do I want all doors or driver's side door? Now, by default, if you hit it twice, all doors automatically unlock. With that being said, about 95% of the customers say, oh, we'll keep it as it is right now, Chris. That makes sense. So we'll keep it there. Keyless lock answer back. Simply hit lock, unlock. I'm assuming you want it to uh, answer back to you, right? Security timer. So let's say you um, left some supplies out here in the front seat. Um, I'm like, Zoe, get out there and go get my supplies, please. You know, 13-year-old with attitude to throw a fit. Uh, when I hit unlock, she has X amount of time to get out there and open up a door. Let's say if Zoe does it, and then 60 seconds, door is automatically relocked. <laughs> then she has to come back and give me attitude if I unlock the doors, all right? So there's that. You got your door unlocked. So here we are, out running around, taking the kids to school, right? Cameron's usually my youngest. He's usually uh, going to be the last one dropped off here. But let's say, you know, I like it because I can shift to park. Automatically, the door is unlocked. You know what I'm saying? But you can change that. So simply, when do you want your doors to unlock? You guys can read those options. No right or wrong. It just comes down to your lifestyle. Now, coming down here, walkway auto lock. So this is off. I'm going to turn this on. Simply when you walk away with the key fob, get 10 feet away, boom, locks all the doors. Doors are locked. Everything is in the car is locked up. Only negative I can think about is that maybe I like to play around in the garage quite a bit with the car. I cannot get in and out of the car while it's in the garage because I got the key fob inside by the front door on the hook. Now you guys know where I keep my key, but there it is. All right. I have to go get that key fob. Uh, a lot of good things is, uh, hey, I'm at work, and I don't have to worry about it. Get done with the test drive, and I don't have to worry about it. Walk away. It locks. I leave the key fob in here. It cannot lock the key fob in the car. It won't. All right? If you guys uh, have this on or off, drop it down in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Pros and cons. Maybe it's something I haven't thought about with the walkway auto lock. All right. We'll come right down here to uh, maintenance. If you got any maintenance stuff, this is it. You know, oil changes, other services that are going to be due. This is where you're going to be looking at. All right. Hey guys, thanks again for watching my video. Hopefully it was very helpful answering some of those questions. Once again, if not, you know what to do. Drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to get to those, answer those questions for you guys. Worst case scenario, you guys give me a reason to make another video, all right? Well, you guys know what to do. If you found this helpful, show your support by hitting like, subscribe. It helps me out. And I'll see you guys at the next video, all right? Talk to you soon.